Alright, so I've been watching anime for a little over a decade. You can thank Tanami for that. And when I was a kid, I've noticed these cliches. I didn't really like them all that much. But now they're kind of coming back to me, but less in terms of emotions and more in terms of structure, in terms of events. These are the anime cliches that I really don't like. We'll start off with the easy one to explain. Deuce Ex Machina. There's a situation where a character is almost about to be killed, and then some random thing you don't know about comes and saves him at the last second. It's simple. This flying shuriken is coming out of nowhere to clock me in in the head and like bring me to my death but then out of nowhere some new character or plot point comes along to deflect it it ruins so many scenes because it makes the characters look weaker for starters it makes them look more pathetic and it really just seems like a shallow way for the writer to get himself out of a hole. We just throw a new character, let's take in the plot. And sometimes it's not always necessarily that, but you really shouldn't introduce these things in such a way. I hate how every anime has to have it so that the character is struggling with a fight. He's almost about to lose and die. And then someone comes and saves him in the last second, or some new thing comes to rescue his ass that we didn't even know about. Like, how am I going to take half these characters seriously if they're dopes that lose to pretty much anyone if something doesn't come along to save them at the last second? The other cliche I don't like is the best friend that becomes your enemy and then he becomes your best friend again. A recent example of this is Naruto where for the first few years, maybe even half a decade, you have Naruto and Sasuke. They're best friends, they're rivals. Naruto is the hot-headed guy with fire in him. Sasuke is cool and collected, and he has a bit of a revenge streak. And while they're having this best friend, bitter rivals relationship, it comes to a point where Naruto is slowly surpassing Sasuke, which bothers Sasuke because he wants to get his revenge against his older brother. So he turns to last resort, he turns to Orochimaru because Orochimaru promised him that if he turns to his side he'll become stronger at the cost of probably being possessed this is okay and everything but you have this arc set up where Sasuke finally makes the decision he breaks his love interest's heart now we're able to beta male, sees that her heart is broken, he wants her too, well he wants her so, even though she wants Sasuke, he ends up having to chase Sasuke with a bunch of other 13 year old boys, and they all nearly get killed by their respective enemies, and then at the end of the day, Naruto is almost killed by Sasuke in their confrontation where he almost won he was that close to winning but he lost, he fell short and basically Sasuke let him live to be spiteful and now Sasuke is doing all this dumb shit with Orochimaru and all that showcases to us is that Really, Sasuke's a dick now. He even acts like a dick in Shippuden. Right at the end of the day, 
thought he committed a crime to the village, I could get him killed. And he eventually comes back. After he kills Orochimaru, he takes on a bit of an anti-hero role. But... Now, he says, okay, I'm with you guys now. And I want to be Hokage just like Naruto. So you're back to doing his best friend's bullshit like nothing ever happened. Like, Sasuke was in with the baddest Michael Jackson impersonator in the world, Orochimaru, working with him as a partner in crime. You know, Orochimaru was possessing dudes. He was doing all sorts of crooked stuff. Hell, Sasuke at one point even wanted to destroy the Kanoha. He wanted to do all this nonsense. But no, he changed his mind. Really. And he's not the only person to do this. This is a common cliche. I know this isn't an anime, but this happens in JRPGs that are written like anime, too. Like Kingdom Hearts, where you had Sora and Riku. And Sora and Riku had a similar initial relationship. And they're similar characters too, but their world falls apart. They're all scattered across different worlds, and they're all like looking for each other. And both of them are looking for Kairi too, which is part of their shitty love triangle as well. While well, Sora ends up with the Keyblade, and he's basically trying to save each world and find knowledge and do the right thing with his new friends. Riku is with Maleficent, he's learning all these like dark powers, he's stealing, he's kidnapping the princesses of light, he's basically working with the other Disney baddies, and he even makes Sora's friends turn on him by taking the Keyblade Sora has, which was originally his in the first place. But by the end of it, we're supposed to forgive him. I'll tolerate that, though, because in Riku's defense, he went through a whole new process to, like, redeem himself, and he's done it several times. It's not like Sasuke, who decided to switch back to the leaf side at the last second. And then you have Final Fantasy 4 or 2 if you're in the States where Kane abandons Cecil numerous times because he gets hypnotized by the baddies or bad guys. And they just act like it's nothing all the time. He'll like turn his back on them at the drop of a hat. Kane's an asshole. And Cecil had his like redemption period, but it it's different. Same concept, same theme, different cliche. A good cliche, however. Another cliche I don't like. I, I don't like when a badass character, a badass main protagonist gradually loses his edge because he goes on field trips. That irritates me. Like, I've seen that with several different anime, uh, and I'm not going to cite a lot of them. We have this cool character. This badass character that doesn't give a damn about anyone. And then, little by little, he turns into a beta male. This one I'll forgive in anime partially, just partially, because it's a product of anything nowadays. You'll have interesting characters that gradually lose their edge over time. Final Fantasy VIII was an example, I guess, but Squall, you could never say he was really a complete badass. But yeah. So those are the annoying cliches I could think of from the top of my head. 
and they plague a lot of anime, the do sex machina, a best friend that turns on you and then tries to be cool with you again, and being characters that lose their edge. It's annoying, I don't like it, and those are my thoughts. Smith so Walker 7 and suck my dick.